Hello and welcome to Emma Reads Reddit. Today I'm reading from r slash ask reddit. But first, let's play r slash drunk or a kid, where I give you a real life scenario and you guess whether it was drunk or a kid. This one was posted by Ice Melts Quickly. Was too tired to climb into my top bunk, so I sat on the floor outside my room and cried for four hours. But what do you think? Is this a drunk or a kid? Find out at the end of the video. Next up was this question being asked by Lorg. What perfectly true story of yours sounds like an outrageous lie? I once nearly killed my older brother with a spear. He and I were playing cowboys and Indians, and being the only one with a BB gun, he was by default the cowboy. I had about a five foot long stick sharpened to a dull point on one end, and was the Indian. He walked up to me, summer in Georgia, where I had a pair of shorts between me and the Lord, and shot me point blank with a BB gun barrel full of sand, and then took off running. He went across the yard, turned right at the fence and continued running hard away from me. I didn't even think about the consequences, took the spear and made a javelin throw like an Olympian would be proud of, and hit him in the back of the neck between 35 and 40 yards away. He face plants with the spear standing upright like a proud flag I had planted on the moon. Then the spear falls over. The tip of the spear went between two vertebrae in his neck. The spear fell because the tip broke off in his neck. I celebrated the victory, then walked over to see what remained. We ended up in the emergency room where the doctors decided not to operate, but rather to let the spear point work its way out on its own. It took 25 years to completely do that. My punishment for this act was that I received a BB gun, figuring that the worst I could do with that was to put his eye out, but that at least we would be on a level footing in combat. Child rearing in the 60s was a different thing, and having a big family, built in spares, helped a lot. My house was broken into while I was asleep on the couch in the living room. I captured my would-be burglar with a battle axe replica that my roommate had on the wall. I made him call 911 on his own phone since I couldn't hold on to him and the axe and a phone at the same time. He tried to get away a few times. A very surprised 911 dispatcher sent the police, who eventually got there, arrested my prisoner and thanked me for not chopping him up. Came home late one night to find David Bowie laying on my bed watching Mary Tyler Moore on my small black and white TV. Owned an after hours club in New York City and my boyfriend met him and brought him home to hang out. A seagull once dropped a whole mackerel on my head. I smelled like dead fish all day. A seagull stole a hot dog right off my grill at the beach once. I chased after it hollering and it shit in my mouth. I met a man who I can only describe as a face tattooed drug dealer constantly dressed in all black on the psych ward and would come in smelling of weed. Anyway, this fucker could just hold out his hand and birds would come to him. All kinds too, like chickadees, seagulls, magpies. No food, no bait, nothing. Just his open hand and he could do it on command. He was like some sort of goth Disney princess. I beat an Olympic medalist at volleyball. I usually leave out the fact that she wasn't an Olympian for volleyball. Almost 20 years ago, my father sold his photo camera to buy some booze. He was an alcoholic and abusive piece of shit among other equally funny things. Inside the camera bag, there was a piece of paper with a handmade aperture and shutter speed chart. I had drawn little circles in that paper when I was a child. Fast forward 15 years. There's a pawn shop near the place where I work and from time to time I go to see what hidden gems I can find. One day there was a camera that looked quite familiar to the one my father sold. I bought it on a whim without even checking if it worked properly, just because it looked like the one he undersold. Once at home, I took a closer look, cleaned it properly and searched the bag. Yes, you know where this is going. There it was, the paper with the chart and my little circles in blue biro. I sat on the sofa for a moment just to let that what the fuck moment sink in. That camera is now in place of honour among my other cameras. If you love your camera, you should set it free. If it comes back to you, it's yours. Moving interstate, all our belongings on the little trailer, pulled over the side of the road so my significant other could pee. Too close to the side of the road and the trailer slid down a small ditch. Not enough to wreck the car, but too steep for our little car to pull out. 
Next thing you know, a white minibus pulls up and out jumps a half dozen guys who were a weightlifting team from, I think, Argentina. It was 25 years ago, not sure now. They lifted our trailer up on the road, climbed back in their van and drove off. I played 11 degrees of random internet separation and wound up at myself. I was working on my GeoCities website in 98 on campus at UT Austin. I was looking for design ideas to poach HTML code from a friend's website, but he didn't have anything I didn't. So I went to his list of 20 plus friends, picked a random one and looked at that guy's page for design ideas. Then I thought, I wonder where in the world I'd end up if I did friend of a friend 10 times like that. New York, China, ISS. So I did. Went to that guy's friends list, picked a random one, went to that person's friend list and so on. The 10th person was an employee of UT, so I didn't even make it off campus, let alone to another country. But he had a webcam in his office, one of those that refreshed an image every 30 seconds. The lights were off, there were open mini blinds, but I couldn't really see much beyond them. Then I noticed that he listed his office number. FAC 222, Flon Academic Centre, second floor, room 222. I realised that I was doing all of this from a computer on the second floor of Flon Academic Centre. I looked up to see that the computer I was on at the end of an aisle directly across from room 222. I went to the window, open mini lines, lights off, webcam on top of his monitor. I go back to my computer to see my own face in the webcam image peeking in his window. Vanilla Ice left me a happy birthday voicemail. 15 years ago, I was friends with a guy who's a professional guitar tech and travels all over with different bands. He was in Miami with a fairly successful band and Vanilla was at the show. Later, on the tour bus, my friend called me at like 3am to wish me happy birthday and handed the phone to Vanilla Ice and he wished me happy birthday. Unfortunately, my service provider's voicemail system only allowed you to save a message for seven days and I couldn't figure out how to save it any other way, so it disappeared into the ether. 15 years ago, you could have used a dictaphone, or you could have just went old school and used a cassette player to record. When I was a kid, I convinced a friend to restart Pokemon Blue and trade me a Squirtle, claiming he'd be able to just reload his previous save anyway. I knew full well he'd lose all his progress, but I wanted to catch them all. After we traded and he realised, crushed, that he'd lost everything, I told him he must have messed up somehow. Then, around 15 years later, on Christmas Eve, I posted this story anonymously in a confessions type thread on 4chan. He was in the thread! By insane coincidence, I got a chance to apologise for my misdeed as an adult. I would have screen capped it for posterity, but I was a little nervous to keep records because he had to reveal a bunch of personal info to prove he knew me. Suffice to say, even the people in the thread didn't believe it was me just acting both parts. When I was a kid, we lived about a mile from a huge world famous zoo. Being so close, I eventually figured out a way to get in for free. This being long enough ago, there were no security cameras, so I started going in after it was closed. Doing it so often, I figured out the guard's schedule and knew when it was safe to be there and not get caught. Me being a kid, I took my bike in there in case I needed a fast getaway. Me being a very bad kid, I stole beers from my brother's hiding place to stick in a backpack for private picnics in the zoo. Peter will downvote me for this, but I shared beers and peanut butter sandwiches with a large female African elephant so often that she welcomed me with a hug when I showed up on my bike. I was waiting for a client in a coffee shop and I saw a man exit an apartment on a higher floor from the balcony. He sort of abseiled down in his undies and ran across the courtyard. Thankfully, this story got evidence. Was hanging out in the backyard with some friends when suddenly we hear a large scraping noise and see an explosion of dust as a car comes through the back fence. Car settles on its side so I run up to see if everything is okay. I climb up and open the driver's side door expecting to see blood and guts and the only person in there is a four year old kid. Turns out, the mom stepped out of the car at the top of the very large hill to take a phone call and didn't put the car in park. The kid wasn't in a car seat and witnesses say they saw him in the driver's seat steering the car down the hill. Kid was perfectly fine except for a bloody mouth. Just up the street from my apartment in San Francisco, there was one of those fast food restaurants that was either a KFC or a Taco Bell depending on the angle from which it was viewed. 
The establishment was a frequent stopping point for students coming from the nearby college, and those students were a frequent target for a remarkably bright crow. Now, on most days, the bird in question would just hang around the restaurant, as well as other ones nearby, and scavenge for scraps. Every once in a while, though, I saw this happen twice, and it happened to me once, it would enact a much more complex scheme than simply going through the gutter. The crow had apparently discovered that money could be exchanged for food, so it would wait until it saw a likely mark, squawk at them to get their attention, then pick up and drop a coin. Anyone who responded would witness the bird hopping a few feet away, then following its victim towards the source of its next snack. When the crow approached me, it dropped a nickel on the ground. I stooped, pick up the coin, and then jumped slightly when the bird made a noise that sounded not unlike taco. Needless to say, I bought that crow a taco. The final out-of-pocket cost for me, minus the nickel, was something like $1.15. Even so, I figured a bird that smart deserved a reward simply for existing. Of course, that was probably exactly what I was supposed to think. Too long, I didn't read. A crow paid me five cents to buy it a taco. I wonder how many of these were actually true. Do you have any stories that sound suspiciously false? Share them in the comments. Now back to r slash drunker kid. So who was the person who sat outside and cried for four hours? It was... A drunk. This was freshman year of college. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed what you have heard, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss any of the daily content from Emma Reads Reddit. See you tomorrow.